All right. Ready? Now Ready. Recording. <laughs> Ready. All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome to This Week in History with Mike and Will. I'm Mike. I'm Will. And we are This Week in History. And this week is also last week's for who cares why. It uh, but we've amalgamed the two weeks. And so we didn't skip a week. No, we didn't. It's like daylight savings time with a week. Yeah, it's a whole week. Not daylight savings time, like leap year. Leap year. Yeah, it's, it's a leap year. We'll blame it on that. Yeah, yeah uh, that was it. That was it. It's February. Yeah, sure. Uh, so what we're <laughs> discussing uh, this week is uh, the trial of Galileo uh, in 1633. It happened on February 13th. Here's how it goes. Is Will has one hour to explain to me the significance of, th- of this event. I've heard of Galileo, so he's got a head start. Yep. <laughs> but on the negative side, he told me he doesn't know a bunch of this stuff. Or how'd you say it? How'd you phrase it? It's he's too smart for me to understand all the stuff he did. Well, let's find out. Let's find out. Oh, and sorry if you're distracted by the scary face behind me. That's a oh yeah, ah, big a, scary monster. I mean, I'll just change that to scary. A little art. That's art. That was, my daughter did that one, but it's a little, uh, a little uh, much. We'll, I was we'll gonna ask you about scary. your daughter. We'll ask about that on not the podcast. Not time. Not time. We have an hour. Now we go. <laughs> so Galileo Galilei. Galileo my, Galilei. Uh, my. Uh, Science teacher in high, uh, not high school in uh, fifth grade always told me uh, she would Mrs. Poppy in Sturgeon Bay at St. Joseph's School she would always say sure. Galileo Galilei e huh? uh, and she was like a, a hardcore teacher not like this was after Catholics started hitting uh, okay, this was, I came in right after that was cool but she was like kind of old school so like if you messed up in her class she'd give you like 500 word compositions and. She was very passionate about how important Galileo was, okay. which is interesting because she's a Catholic school teacher. So oh, I'm sure that comes this, into this it. does come into play. All right, so, so his first name was Galileo? Galileo, and his last, last name, name was Galilei. Galilei. It's the same exact spelling, but instead of an O, there's an I. Oh, okay. He was born in Pisa. All right. That's where the Leaning Tower is. Yeah. He actually did some experiments using the Leaning Tower. Oh. It's a lot easier to drop stuff off I the Leaning side. I thought that was a... Um, like a, not a myth, like a cherry tree uh, mm. a, a story told. I thought so too, and then I did some more reading on it to make sure that that wasn't just like a meme. Folklore. <laughs> Folklore. Because he does have a, a, a bunch of things attributed to him that he didn't necessarily say or do. Yeah, yeah. But when you got his list of achievements, that's just like yeah, kind of an extra. Uh, but he did actually do, uh, so Galileo's a, for those who don't know, is a very famous scientist. He's considered the was f- was was. As far as we know, he's been dead for like four hundred years. As far as we know, as far as we know, lived to the ripe old age of like seventy seven. No, oh. so he lived a good long life. Mm-hmm. Um, but he's considered the father of modern physics. He's considered one of the earliest uh, founders of engineering. Mm. Um, which is, what's also interesting, though, is the things that he was most famous for are his telescope and microscope. The terms have not been coined yet, oh. uh, but he made a complex refracting telescope. He could look at the sun. What did he call it then? Um, well, his friend named it. He had, oh. a, he had a Greek friend who's like, we'll call it the telescope. That Just it, a Greek friend to use Greek words. Yeah, we'll use words. the Greek words. <laughs> We're in Italy, but we'll use Greek. It sounds more scientific. And they're like, yes, yeah, so it's more scientific. Foundation, Lincea. Uh, L-I-N-C-E-A, and it was just a group of scientists. Like, but when science wasn't really a thing yet, like it wasn't. Uh, it was just coming into being. But it was more of independent theories of thought, and most of the colleges were uh, run by the church. Okay. So this was kind of a, hey, I have this idea, and I think this would be really cool. What do you guys think? Like, this is good science. Where, like, Galileo is famous for um, not saying. I know this to be true, and then just staying with that for forever. Right. He changed his opinions all the time, depending on observation and fact, because that's what science is. It's too bad you're famous for that. Seems like that should be standard. That should be standard. <laughs> Nowadays, people think that science is supposed to be like, well, science is always changing. You can't just say it's fact. Well, it's fact for what we know, sure. and then things change. Yeah. Before Gal- or before Copernicus, who's 100 years before Galileo, uh, everybody knew that the Earth was the center of the universe because the Bible said so. And because people just assumed that was the way it was because from their perspective, everything else is moving, we're not moving. Yeah. Well, Galileo was a very strong believer in the Copernican theory that the Earth goes around the sun. And this is where he starts to run into trouble. 
Because that makes no sense. How would we do that? How can we go around the sun? When the sun's over there on the top and the bottom. Yes, and God made the world. It always goes back to the religious belief. Mm -hmm. Um, Because faith is kind of this singular thing where you can just use it to explain everything. Sure. And that way you never have to challenge yourself or question anything. Faith is a wonderful and beautiful thing, but when you use it to deny science, yeah. deny the, the world around you, uh, to strip others of their... To control people. Things, yes, to their freedoms or their mm-hmm. beliefs or their ideas or their free will, then it's not so good. Yeah, yeah. And we've seen that time and time again with the Crusades and uh, the, the Inquisition, which... History is littered with dead people who thought religion was probably a bad idea at the last <laughs> second. <laughs> Exactly. Like every time we had talked about, like, uh, like even Mary Queen of Scots, she ran into trouble because she was a Catholic in a Protestant country, and Elizabeth ran into trouble because she was a Protestant in a Protestant country. Wrong place, and wrong time. It's just everybody's mad at everybody, and we still have problems from it today. So that's sure, sure. part of the reason we do this. Not to say religion's bad, but you know, maybe don't go killing each other uh, because of differences. In I like to think most religions have a. Well, claws in there. Don't, don't kill. Don't kill people. In fact, all of them. <laughs> Strange that. In fact, all of them. We and there's that. not like an <laughs> asterisk by it that says. Unless. Unless. <laughs> people find unlesses in the Quran. It's like, well, I mean, you can kill the infidel, but it also says, don't kill anybody. So then they have to find othering it. You know, oh, well, sure. they don't count as people. Like uh, that Pope you hate that <laughs> said, yeah. everybody over there who's not a Christian doesn't count as people, so yeah. you're free. You're people free shouldn't be allowed to decide who are people. No, I think... We're the people. worst to <laughs> decide. <laughs> it's really... I think dogs should run the show. Yeah. Dogs, if the dog likes you, probably a good guy. Yeah. If a dog doesn't like you, yeah, you're probably, probably a bad, bad guy. guy. You're probably a bad guy. I think yeah. it's a fair assessment. Dogs are good judges of care. If a cat likes you or doesn't like you, that's not good. That doesn't help. That us. doesn't help because every cat's so different. They don't care. <laughs> but uh, so Galileo, we don't know his relationship with dogs, cats, but we do know uh, that uh, he was a, a renowned scientist for his time. Even uh, he was very, very well respected because he was very good at explaining his point. Oh. He had a sarcastic side to him, though. Like okay. in in his debates, where he was kind of snide. Oh. Now this wasn't unusual. Lots of scientists were like that, you know, like oh yes, yeah, I've seen father so I've seen Neil deGrasse Tyson. Yes, <laughs> so yes, imagine that you're the smartest guy in the room, and a bunch of guys who've never looked through a telescope are yeah. telling you what you saw. Yeah, yeah, and they're trying to like gaslight him, and in turn he's just like, oh yeah, because. Because you're so smart, yeah. Because your background is how amazing. public of a figure was Galileo? Do we know? He got pretty public pretty yeah. quick. Um, so he started doing his research at a pretty young age. So he was born fifteenth uh, of February, so he's another February day. Happy birthday! Uh, in 1564. Okay. But he really didn't come to prominence um, until like the early 1600s. Now he was doing stuff well before that. Sure. He was having these meetings with people. He was engaging in uh, debates. Uh, a lot of the times they'd have debates over letters, so it took a while. Oh. But they could write their basically. And like, he could also think out everything yep, and, and you, have a real good. You think book. out something, you write your thesis down, you yeah. do some experiments, and then you send it back rather than tweet. <laughs> you know, where it's an instant. Ah, blah, blah. So thought. Oh, maybe thought I should have. Maybe yeah. I should have delved more into this idea, <laughs> right? So these guys would write letters back and forth. One of his uh, I- original students. Uh, they had had a, a, a talk about whether the sun was the center of the universe, because um, that was also their misunderstanding. So Galileo wasn't right about everything, because Copernicus said the sun was the center of the universe. Oh. Not just the solar system. They didn't have a full grasp of how big everything was. Yeah. That didn't come until later. Uh, and then there was another guy, Tycho Brahe. Uh, I was a point of order. I don't think we still know how big it is. No, we have no concept. It's how big, we're like a speck. It's entirely possible that it's not big at all. It could be pretty darn small. We just assume it goes on for forever, but then... We don't know. Is there something beyond it? Are we, in fact, a marble on a cat's necklace like in Men in Black? Maybe. We could be. Don't know. That's how When I get philosophical, I have to think about Men in Black. Yep, that's my thing. No? No? Okay. I was being sarcastic. Anyway, you were talking about... You and Galileo might have gotten on well. Sure, sure. Um, So don't speak old Italian. One of his students... uh, had gotten like 
accosted by uh, Christina of Florence. She was a countess. She was a, uh, an important lady. She was wealthy. And she was very, very religious. And she's like, how can you say this? I've read your, your dissertation on this, and I think it's nonsense. And she kind of got in his face. So the student talked to his teacher that he had helped him write this paper. And was like, so this is her argument. And rather than Galileo just saying, ah, she's dumb, he treated this as she raised questions, I shall give answers. So he actually, he sent this, this letter to the guy. This is the eight-page letter. And he said, explain this to her. Because I'm not gonna. Yeah, like, yeah. Just th this is this is what we talked about. Yep. Here you go. This is why. Because he like I wanted to explain to the guy. This is what we've been talking about. So how to talk to women? Yep. <laughs> yeah. Don't it, be rude to her. <laughs> he like Cyrano de Bergerac. <laughs> this is how you talk to her respectfully. Uh, but then when uh, she persisted with his argument, Galileo then just decided to write to her directly, yeah. and his essay went from eight pages to forty. So he, if they said it was a letter, that's a small that's book. That's a small book. <laughs> so he sent her 40 pages. Basically, this is why I think the way I think this is my theory on this. And that kind of, like, his ability to write out his thoughts helped him really organize a lot of his studying oh, sure. uh, and his ideas. And then he would get them printed because the printing press had been invented, and he'd have them distributed. Um, he published books, um, and that's how he got to be known. Because it wasn't just like the scientific community; he could also break it down for a small, like like a smaller crowd, or for like the peasant class. He could explain it in simple terms. The problem with like reading up on it is he's not the guy explaining it; it's some scientist explaining his theory. Oh. So it's way above what my brain is really capable of grasping. I can grasp and like. I assume this was also written in the time, so you just said it was uh, printing it was just beginning. Well done, Gutenberg. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, although I just read a thing that not the uh, police academy. I just read the thing that the uh, print uh, movable type printing press was made in, like four hundred years earlier in China somewhere. Yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah. And that had to be much more complicated because the language is totally different. You totally need a printing press. Yeah. Uh, but either way, what I'm saying is that since there weren't, uh, there hadn't been a bunch of books written before that point. Right. And someone writing kind of a sciencey book is not going to write it. To be palatable to read easily, right? And they're going to write it to be accurate it's and scientific. Pretty dense, yeah. yeah. So like, because there's a later book that Stephen Hawking wrote, which only had like one equation in it, famously, mm -hmm. uh, because he wanted it to be like really accessible. He wanted and, people to understand yes. it. Yes. Yeah. And that another thing that was problematic with the academics of the time is was flowery language was very popular. Well, we just learned how to print. Yeah, exactly. And <laughs> and, and even like again, um, so he his constant debates were with theologians. Yeah. Not scientists, yeah. theology experts, because their problem was this undermines the church. Right, right. By Scient saying, scientists were like, well, uh, I think you're doing a thing. Yeah, yeah. Right, I right. think, yeah, because the scientists, he, I was reading about him and it was like, well, they had like questions about how he came to these conclusions and they sure. had different theories, but they never were like, you're an idiot. But the, the religious folk were like, ah, it doesn't jive, right? Religion, religion, religion. But also, we have a scientist in our pocket that said this. So, oh. there. Um, because at the time, the church taught an Earth-centric, a geocentric concept that we're the center of the universe. And this had been taught by Aristotle. So at the time, this thinking is almost 2,000 years old. And it was literally just Aristotle going like this and kind of observing and then writing it down because he's the smartest guy in the room. But he didn't have the tech that these guys had. He didn't have the mathematical equations. Um, and... You know, he didn't have all this extra time in between where people sure. were learning more. And Aristotle himself was fi fine with, like, learning new things and changing his views, but he didn't have access to all of this stuff that these guys have. So, so roughly 390 years ago, this is when this is? Yes. Well, about? Yep. 390 years ago, a majority of people still believe that the Earth was the center of the universe? And in Europe, anyway. For all I know, China was like, yeah, we're not. <laughs> we figured that out a lot. Who knows? Well, you guys are like, ooh, printing press. We're like, eh, printing press. You guys okay. are like, ooh, gunpowder. We're like, yeah, we've been make. We not only figured out how to weaponize it, we turned it into fun. Wow. <laughs> we invented your, fireworks. Your, China, your Chinese fire. accent is very subtle. My, see? <laughs> very subtle. I, I think so, too, because the other version is super racist. Yeah, that's a problem. <laughs> that's, white guys probably shouldn't do Chinese accent. Even if you sound just right. 
Doesn't sound It's good. a tricky time. Mm-hmm. If only we were in 1920s vaudeville, we could if, do a Chinese accent. If this accent. was 10 years ago, I could be as racist as I want, and it would still be not okay. <laughs> but you'd be but okay. But I wouldn't get yelled at. <laughs> All right. Anyway. So anyway. So Galileo, though. Yeah. Um, so yeah, there's this debate still about, you know, there is still people that are arguing the world is flat. And this oh, yeah, is, currently. This has been fruit. Uh, today a, there are I people. I thought, thought that was a joke. I and thought no, that people were being today, funny about it. They have uh, thousands of supporters around the globe. That's what they've said. Hmm. Literally said that on the internet. It's like, around the globe, which is just, yeah, yeah, yeah. you guys are not smart. Yeah, get it. You're not smart. You can disprove it super easy. It's been disproven. Even the Catholic Church was like, yeah, yeah it's fine. That one we're not mad about. <laughs> cool. The world's not flat. Nice. Um, and anyway, anyway, the problem, though, was if in Catholic faith... God created the world. Humans are special. We are the only sentient beings in all of existence. Therefore, we are the center of all the things. Because if we're not, then suddenly we're a lot less special. That makes that adds, asks a lot of questions about yeah, the, book, the books you, they've been reading. And literally the only source they have for any of their views, any religious person, has a single source, and it's the Bible. And it is not a reliable source, as we've studied with the Council of Nicaea, where yeah. the, basically the emperor said, yeah, this goes in and this goes in and that doesn't go in and that goes in. And the Bible at the time consisted of hundreds of different versions and books. Yeah. And now there are, I think, 30,000 versions of the Bible in the world because of different languages. You're also trying to translate like Aramaic to Greek or to Hebrew to Greek to Latin, and then to whatever other language. You lose a lot. In the oh, surely one of them is right. Surely, surely. Now, if you can read the original Sanskrit, sure. that's the closest you're probably going to get. Problematically, there's 6,000 different versions, and the newest ones were written well after Christ died. So everything is... Let's just look at it that right. way. And there's there's couldn't questions. Cross, couldn't cross-check And the once guy. again... Faith is wonderful, but don't try to use it to argue against Galileo science because that's what they tried to do with him. Yeah. Um, and I'm coming off as really attacky against religion. I'm really trying not well, to. Well, I mean, the, the trial is religion versus but science. But it is religion so versus science. So that's why we're talking about I can this. see the position yes. you have. Yes, <laughs> I'm trying to. So, uh, interestingly enough, though, uh, so I'm going to try to get a timeline because there were actually like two trials. Oh, okay. uh, they were almost 30 or they were 23 years apart. Ooh. So in 1610, uh, Galileo writes the Starry Messenger. There's a Latin version of the title, but I prefer the, the Starry English. Starry Messenger? The Starry Messenger. I like that. And it promotes heliocentrism, that the, Earth is, or that the sun is the center because we revolve around it. And he bases this off of Copernicus's theory that he came up with back in 1543. So, 70 years before almost, this guy's like, yeah, we're not in the middle. <laughs> I've used this cool device, and I can see some things, and no. Yeah. And he was kind of dubbed a heretic. It wasn't like a hardcore, like, burned at the stake it's heretic. Still, regardless of, of, of the, the religious uh, aspects of it, scientifically, that's got to be a weird thing to, like, conceive of. Yeah. Because wherever you are, your viewpoint, everything seems to be moving around, you know, just yep. normal. Well, so, and, get, and, then, and then to go, wait, what if I wasn't what if I'm looking not? from this point of view? Exactly. You have, to, you have to perceive already from a different point of view. Correct. To even so the problem with Copernicus, Copernicus's theory is it doesn't have as much science behind it. So mm. Galileo starts tinkering with a telescope. <laughs> and he makes a much more complex version that can see right. way further. So they had a telescope before. They did. Just this is not the first telescope. Oh, it just wasn't was called that. Multi lens. It was like a multi lens. Yeah. It was a refracting yeah. telescope. So it was very. It was a complex instrument. I think he probably was like, well, one lens did this. What if we have several? What yeah. if we sure. set it up differently? Uh, and he tried different things. Um, he also invented the first uh, thermometer. It, it was technically called like the thermoscope. Uh, because, but it was the baseline of using a liquid to measure temperature. Oh, okay. And then... I like to call it a thermometer. Uh, yeah, thermometer. <laughs> a meter of thermos. Uh, but eventually, so like this guy invents all kinds of things. He's like, well, I don't have a tool to measure that. I'll make one. Sure. <laughs> like, okay. You know, I, I, I mean, not to 
downplay his inventions, but it was easier a long time ago to be an inventor. It was because there wasn't stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Nowadays, people are like, you could invent something. It's like, they've all been done. Yeah. Now it's like you can get the little rack that goes in your sink to hold, like, the sponge. Yeah. And that's a new invention. It's like, good job. Is it? Not the sink. <laughs> they had racks before. They had sinks before. Yeah. Right? Yeah, but now they're like, here's a different one. It's slightly different. Here's yeah. a slightly different grip for a pen. Here's. That, but that's my. It's not as cool. It's not as cool. But back then, it was a lot easier. Sure, sure. But also, it inqui- required a lot more inventive. Yeah. Like, it, it required an investment of time and effort um, sure. and constant experimentation, which is cool. Um, and Galileo paid the price for his. Because he wanted, he wanted so badly to learn things that he he literally looked at things he shouldn't have. Oh. He studied sunspots. Oh. Now, to the viewers, don't, this is a, don't stare at the sun. Yeah. Ever. Especially not like during an eclipse. That's really stupid. That will blo- that can like burn a hole in your retina. <laughs> and then also if you have <laughs> an old school refracting telescope. Don't try to stare at sunspots without the proper protection. Even though you can. Even though you can. You totally can. You can totally do whatever you want. Yeah, don't. I feel like it's a good public service announcement. Sure, sure. Don't stare at really bright stuff, like, nonstop, okay? You get, like, a headache from staring at a computer screen too long, the sun. Okay. Um, Galileo went blind later in life, probably because he spent so much of his time... Staring at the sun. No one told him not to. No one told him not to. He probably knew he shouldn't. Yeah. But But I gotta see it. But I gotta (laughs) see what's going on. So uh, he was watching sunspots. But one of his big thing with the starry messenger was is he observed uh, the phases of Venus. Mm. He noticed that the shadows on Venus moved, like more or less of it was visible. And that meant that there were shadows being cast on it based on the rotation of where the Earth was and where Venus was in relation to the sun. Mm, yeah, okay. There was never a shadow cast on the sun. There was never shadows cast on other things. There wasn't a shadow cast on Earth from Venus. That, yeah, I guess. He was, he was finding like all these different phases for it. Uh-huh. Uh, and then he was like, so that using all this, because you could find a way to say like, well, the reason that Venus has a shadow on it is because it's, the sun is rotating around in such a way. But he was like, no, 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 this is the science behind it. And he explained it very thoroughly. The the drawings don't work out after all. The math doesn't work out. Yeah, right and now. he was just like, this this is why. This yeah. is why this is. And it was a great step forward to prove the sun was in the center. Sure. Now, again, they thought universe, not solar system. So he was still wrong in that thinking that it was the center of the universe, but it's definitely the center of our universe. Yeah. <laughs> like colloquially speaking because we don't live past the solar system so <laughs> not yet not yet not yet we got stuff out there now that's pretty cool got a spaceship we got spaceships we can start to travel that's something beyond galileo's time so take that galileo i mean it was only 390 years ago that we were looking at things and thought the the place the sun was in the wrong place well, think of it this way lesson like 40 years from now, we'll have spaceships. Well, 50 years ago, we were starting to go to the moon. Pew. And then we stopped. Imagine if we kept going instead of, I don't know, spending that money blowing stuff up. Just a theory. As an ex-soldier. There are better ways to spend that money. Moving on. (laughs) Moving on. Moving on. And oddly enough, Galileo did make a military invention. It seems like all the Renaissance men of the time. and, And we talked about that word polymath, where it's like somebody's just good at all the things. Yeah. Galileo is considered a polymath. Right. He knew mathematics. He knew music. Ooh. He studied music theory because his father was an expert in music theory who studied, like, you could take the square root of the length of a string to determine a pitch, depending on where you hit the string, and he used math to explain it. It's pretty cool. Um, pretty cool. For me, I'm just like, I like that sound. You're right. <laughs> but I'm a, as a singer guy, yeah, like, yeah, but it's yeah. a lot easier to just go, ah, oh, I don't have to look at anything and play with strings but that was something that they studied so he was raised in a home that encouraged education learning about these things right. what um, military thing was it a tank or a submarine it was a helicopter compass. Tank. a compass it was a compass uh it was a way to measure uh finding the range and pitch for cannon oh. 
So it was actually like practical military usage that yeah. saw field use. Uh, he made, I think, 100 of these things, uh, sold them for like 50 bucks a pop, and then did training sessions for 120 bucks a pop. You're making these prices up. No, they were levers. They were, I, I read this. They okay. were 50 levers or 40 <laughs> levers okay. per. But we compass. don't know what that means. <laughs> I don't know what that is. Okay. Yeah, I, I don't know if that's in silver coinage. Right. I don't know if that's 50 gold. 50 levers could be $50,000. It could be, it could be a penny. Yeah. It could be nothing. Oh. I, I think that's the so common 50 currency. things. I don't, it wasn't ducats. I think ducats is gold. I don't know. It, it seems like in every town they have a different currency. So Libras, so I just said Ooh, 50 bucks. That does bring up a, a question, though. How is he paying for to be a, a person? Oh. <laughs> to just exist, much so, less to do experiments and build things. Part of it comes from this kind of a thing. Yeah. See how a lot of scientists throughout history have like gotten military funding to do their research? Strange. He was like... They're smart as scientists. <laughs> they know where their money is. Um, and also, you could get like grants from nobles to do research in their name. Uh, and they would pay for you to live, sure. basically. Uh, so he was big into that. Uh, Florence, he had benefactors in Florence who were like, dude, I love your ideas. I like what you're talking about. This is really cool. This is fascinating. And it was it was popular to have like a scientist in your employ. Ooh. If you were... That's cool. It, it showed you were an educated person. Mm. Because even though like you had to walk that fine line of appeasing the church, you also, being educated was a really good thing. In Italy. Yeah. In other parts of Europe, not so much. But in Italy, that was the big thing. Yeah. You wanted to be the Renaissance man or the yeah, Renaissance yeah, yeah. woman. You wanted you wanted that. Is this the Renaissance? This is the end of towards the end of the Renaissance. Yeah. This is like the kickoff of the Enlightenment. Oh. When stuff really starts going down. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Because this is when people are starting to like read. Well, and also they're starting to burn for their beliefs. Oh. Like it's like this, not passionately? No, like <laughs> literally. <laughs> Um, which is what Galileo runs into. Right. So in 1610, he writes the Starry Messenger, and he's promoting heliocentrism or C Copernican theory, because mm -hmm. Nicholas Copernicus was like, hey, we're not in the middle. And the church was like, no, we are. Otherwise, you undermine us, because if you undermine one thing in the Bible, then you undermine the whole church. Heresy. Yep. That's it's all like or nothing. Stands. It's all or nothing game. Zero sum. Yeah. And then in 1610, they're kind of like, you. You shouldn't talk about this. And he's like, but I'm gonna. Talk about it. I wrote a, I yep, wrote a, I wrote a book. <laughs> um, so he starts to study the tides then. Ooh. And the movements of the moon. He also is one of the first guys to observe the moon and notice that it's not flat. The moon is not flat. The moon is not flat. Like it has mountains and craters and oh. hills and valleys and rocks and Before stuff. Before people just thought They thought it was, it was like a flat, smooth disc. And even at the time, he had a meeting at, uh, let's see if I wrote it down. Uh, it was the Collegium uh, Romanum, uh, which is like the Jesuit college. Okay. And the Jesuits were considered the most learned of men. But also, 99% religion, 1% other stuff. Like, they could discount anything based on their religion. So he brought his telescope to show people the moon, and they wouldn't even look inside. They wouldn't even look at it. They're like, nope, that's nonsense. Utter nonsense. And he was like, well, you're not even looking. Nope, nonsense. Crap. At least, it's garbage. At least they had an open mind. Yeah. He's like, but, but, <laughs> but, and this was in 1611. He goes in, and he's got his arguments. This is the start of his troubles. His troubles? Because he... Pisses, like, yeah. He pisses off yeah. the Jesuits. And yeah. we've studied enough in little bits of history. This is when the Jesuits are still in power. Okay. Um, and the Jesuits are kind of this aggressive missionary organization within the Catholic Church. Um, they would be seated throughout Europe in places of power as advisors. They were educated men. I was going to say, I thought the Jesuits, that was their big thing, was being educated. They were very educated. It seems out of character for them to not... But if it at Learn. all potentially goes against the teaching or will of the oh, church, then, it's hard to then go they learn. bury it. Oh, I don't want to learn that. Yeah, and this is during the Protestant Reformation, so they're super anti-heresy. Like, that oh. was another thing of theirs, is spying to find heretics. So the Protestants are like, we hate the Jesuits, because <laughs> they want to burn us all at the stake. And the Jesuits are like, we hate the Protestants, because we, we do. Yeah. <laughs> we do want to burn them at the stake, because they're heretics. Um, and they want Plus, what else are we going to fill our days with, besides hate right. for other people? Hate for other people. It's, it's such a... I've finished my chores for the day. 
no movies to go see. They didn't have Facebook then. Yep. That was a great way to vent your spleen Guess nowadays. It's time to go hate the time. a person. Yep. Well, and if you don't have to deal with different people, True. then it's easy to hate them. Oh, easy. So the Jesuits live in these little orders where they're just like, yes, we're Jesuits. Ha ah! ha. Echo chamber. Anytime you have an echo chamber of everybody just thinks the exact same way and nobody questions anything. It's not Sometimes this good. history thing just makes me more depressed. Like, doesn't it? Doesn't it? Doesn't it? But Some, this kind of has a happy ending. Let's hope. Let's get there. Not really, kind well, of. Crap. All right, we'll keep going. It's a melancholy ending. Is that something? Great. Um, <laughs> next week's will be fun. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> anyway, why is it the ones that are not about murder or war are more depressing? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Anyway, so he starts to get into a fight with this guy, Christoph Shiner. Christoph Shiner. Christoph Shiner. Okay. He's a, he's a Jesuit. And they become, they become lifelong bitter enemies. Ah, I was hoping there was an antagonist. That's his enemy. That's okay. his, uh, who do we have? We had Hans for uh, yeah. von Steuben. This is, his, this is his rival. He does not like this guy. Shiner. S-C-H-E-I-N-E-R. S-C-H-E-I-N-E-R. They are... Rivals. Shiner is just anytime Galileo says anything, he's like, that guy's full of crap. Meh. Mm. I don't like that guy. Uh, Sh- Christoph Shiner sounds like a German I think he or was Austrian. A German, okay. German or Austrian. Um, he was not an Italian. Not every Jesuit was uh, Spanish or Italian. They were everywhere. Mm. They accepted everybody. Oh, actually, also, where's all this taking place? So this is going on in Italy. Okay. Uh, the Collegium Ro- uh, Romanum was in Rome. Okay. So this part is happening in Rome. Got Most it. of this tale happens in Rome because Galileo keeps having to go back to Rome to defend his views. Back to Rome. Yep. And now, more, normally, he's in Florence, which isn't too far away. Yeah. But back then, you know, everything's by horse or cart. Hey, yeah, so it's still a hike. Um, so he's in Rome for this and he's trying to explain to these guys the moon isn't flat and the tides caused by the moon show that the moon revolves around the earth but then the earth is moving in certain ways and that's why the moon looks different positionally to the sun meh and they're like no 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 yeah. nonsense you lost me at the second thing moving yep. there's two yep. parts moving there's two things <laughs> oh, moving no 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 everything's that's just going around earth and he yeah. said but no it's way easier to think this way it's, <laughs> it's and they're like exactly they're like nope nope if it's just in the bible and we can just say that explains it yeah, then yeah. i never have to think beyond this i just go mm, says it right there don't have to question it. Don't have to think it's a parable. Don't have to think it's a metaphor did people, for people living in tents explaining how the world works. Did people think about tides before this and then think that the moon I'm, had control of them? Not necessarily that the moon did. I'm sure sailors and like coastal people had more of like a, yeah, when the moon's this way, the tide sucks. Yeah. Like, so they, didn't some, necessarily know, some knowledge. they didn't necessarily know about like the <coughs> mathematics behind it. Mm, or the whys. Or the whys. Yeah. They just knew that that was happening. So he delved into it a little sure. more. He's like, why does the moon have this? Well, it has to have a size to it, and it has to yeah. have like a proximity and the way we see it, and that's affecting how the world is working. And Where were they on gravity at this point? Or do we have this? He discusses this. That's good. He discusses it. So Newton hasn't done his thing yet, uh, I think. I think Newton's after this, 1642. I'd have to double check. This whole time, people are dropping things, and nothing's happening. They're not really sure. Nothing's just, falling. Uh, nothing's falling. Just, just sits. Things just hovering. You just, you just drop this little stick, and it. Mm-hmm. that didn't happen back then. Boy. And Gal- So Galileo, actually, we talked about uh, the Leaning Tower of Pisa. So he's at home in Pisa. And that would have totally took, fallen had they discovered a, gravity earlier. He took a feather and a cannonball, oh, yeah. and he dropped them both. Yeah. Well, the cannonball went faster than the feather. Yep. But then he took a cannonball and, like... A, a small ball, like, like a rubber ball. Well, <laughs> yeah. not rubber, but like a ball of the same size. Well, the cannonball is significantly heavier. And everybody's like, the heavier one's going to fall faster. Aristotle said so. Apparently, nobody had tried this out for 2,000 years. So he dropped the cannonball and the lighter but equally large shape, and they hit the ground at the same time. And he's like, science. Science. Feather science. Fall, feather fall slower because air resistance. And, that's what, and he also was the one who said, if... There was no wind. Oh, the sure. feather would fall just as fast, and that was proven. Yeah, they did that on the moon. On the moon. They did that on the moon. When yeah. I forget which astronaut it was, but he took a feather and a rock hammer, and dropped them, and they both fell at the exact same time. Nice. And people have been able to reproduce the the experiment on yeah. Earth because we can make a vacuum chamber now. But he basically said, in a vacuum, 
all things being equal, feather falls as fast as the ball does. Doesn't matter what it is, the mass doesn't change anything. Everything falls at the same rate because that's the force that gravity has. People are like, poppycock. Well, it is hard to... And then he proved I mean, it. The observation is yep. uh, you see a feather and it does fall. Yep. It does. I've seen it at the beginning of Forrest Gump. It takes yep. forever, that feather Take fall. forever. And you just kind of watch as it... Mm -hmm. But with Galileo, he said, okay, so the feather thing is difficult because the wind catches it. Yeah. Well, I could take something of the exact same weight as the feather and drop it, and it's going to fall. Or the same shape as the feather, but a different material, and it's going to fall. And it's all going to fall at the same rate. That's just how it works. Yeah. Stuff increases... <coughs> excuse me. With speed... I need to drink some coffee. Hold on. Mm, stuff increases... Stuff increases in velocity as it goes, so you reach terminal velocity the farther you fall. But if everything falls at the exact same time, it'll all hit the ground at the same time. Yeah. Unless the ground's in different places, right? Yes. Like if you have like a slope, this will not hit first. Oh, sure, sure, yeah. That kind of a thing. Hey, hey, hey. We got a cat that's telling us. Hi, Mr. Pitters. <laughs> Sorry for the cat commentary. Sorry for the cat commentary. He does not appreciate our He commentary. doesn't like science. As a cat, he doesn't like gravity. He hates gravity. He's not a fan of it. Cats try to just, nah, it's not a thing. Um, so he, yeah, he, so the conversation about gravity has happened. That's less offensive to the church because sure. the Bible doesn't say, no, no gravity. The Bible probably didn't weigh in on it. I didn't, imagine they didn't have to figure that. <laughs> weigh in. <laughs> yeah, get it, because that would be really funny if you'd use the Bible and dropped that. Oh. Oh, then, oh. then, the, then the Inquisition would have come knocking. Um, so no, so he's getting into these debates with these guys, and he really starts to make them mad when he's like doubles down on his his work about Starry Messenger, and then he starts talking about lunar phases. Uh, he even gets into a big fight over comets because. Mm. He's this one guy's like, well, that comet's smaller than the moon, so it must be further away. And Galileo's like, no, it's smaller. He's, he's like, he thinks that they're all every heavenly body is like the same size. Right, right. So the comet must be really, 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 really far away. And Galileo's like, no, no, no. Actually, the comet's coming in between the moon and Earth, and I saw it here. See? And they're yeah. like, no, we're not gonna look. He's like, but it's right there. We observed it. With Boy, it's tricky to debate with people who refuse to even look yeah, at it. Yeah, and he like had the thing set up, and he's like, "Look," and they're like, "Nope, not even gonna bother." He had, literally wrote a letter like, "They wouldn't even look at what I did, and they wouldn't even look at it." And then they said, they were, I was "Wrong." Do you think they were just like uh, it was twofold? Either they were so ingrained in their belief they were concerned that seeing this would force them Shake to, them. to, or do they think that some sort of trickery, witchcraft? Both probably. Yeah, probably both. Which it's, but also. Anytime you accuse something of witchcraft, it's because you're too lazy to think beyond it. Yeah. You know, like at the time you're like, ah, witchcraft. Not a perfectly rational explanation. It's just easier to call it witchcraft. True. Oddly enough, in like the Middle Ages, that wasn't a big deal. Like they didn't say, ah, witchcraft. It's like, well, God would just smite witches and demons. That's oh. just not a thing. Like that's a commonly misunderstood thing where people think like, ah, burner, there's the Monty Python, but with the yeah, yeah, witches. Yeah. That was later, and that was largely uh, the Inquisition. Oh. And then... Uh, the Puritans in this country, uh, when they were doing the witch burnings, and not a single one of them was a witch, it was just oppression of women, because they didn't like yeah, women yeah, yeah. speaking out. Yeah. So, but, like, you can look at it as, oh, I didn't understand how that thing worked. That guy took that plant, and he made that person feel better. Well, it was willow bark, and if you have enough of it, it's like, that's aspirin, and then, and then his headache went away. Trickery and witchcraft! Kill him! Kill. But in, like, the Middle Ages, they're like, eh. That's just a wise woman. Eh, it's not such a big deal. Okay. Like, if something went really wrong in the village, they might blame the hermit. Yeah. It's like, that's, a, that's the outsider. We blame the outsider. You always Humans always blame the outsider. It's real easy to blame the outsider. But typically, like, they weren't super paranoid about that stuff. Okay. They figured God would just sort it out. God just sort it out. And then at some point, they went, you know, Because especially the more faithful, they were like, no, we don't need even need to worry about this. God's so powerful that, like, the devil is just hiding in hell. We're not worried about that it. That would be idea, an ideal religion thing. To believe that your God is so powerful that you don't have to do anything. <laughs> that you could you relax, you don't have to calm do, down. <laughs> you if to, God is that and that was like a lot of like more common but he's like, if God's that powerful, like why am I worried about it? And some of the priests would be like, Heresy, you have to be worried about it. Why do I have to be worried? Why do I have to worry about that? God's all powerful. Do so you like, question the power of God? No, but it sounds like you do. <laughs> Just saying. And again, it boils down to 
the churches at this time, the organized religion, it's not the faith that's the problem. It's the organized religion trying to hold power and control people. Yeah. They're seizing land. They're controlling all this stuff. So guys like Galileo asking questions. Well, if they're asking questions about science and things that can be proven, what if we start dabbling in politics? What if we start dabbling in society and the rights of man? Yeah. Or, God forbid, women. That's not even on the table yet. That's not even on the Creeps. table yet. It's not even on the table yet. Although, I have to point out, it's really cool that Galileo talks to this Christina of Florence oh. and doesn't dismiss her. He doesn't go, well, she's a woman. Oh, yeah. She asked questions. He answered as a scientist to a, a somebody who had legitimate questions. Do we know about Galileo's personal life? Was he just hitting he on her? He was a family man. No? He had a family. Yeah. He had a daughter. Um, I know this for a fact because she helps him with his sentencing later. Hmm. So Let's get to that. Let's get to that. So, 1611, he visited the college. Uh, he meets this guy, Robert Bellarmine. Or Bellarmine. I'm not exactly sure how it's pronounced. Okay. Bellarmine. 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 I think that's probably right because <laughs> I think he's... But it's Robert, not Roberto. This guy's a saint. Literally. He's, he was beatified and then he was canonized uh, in the 1900s. I don't know why. Because his sole contribution seems to be telling people that the earth is not the center of the universe. And he creates a registry of banned books. Oh. So, Sounds like sainthood to me. Yeah. <clears throat> he's very well respected as a theologian and a scientist. And he's like, it's fine to discuss heliocentrism as a theory, but like as a joke. You so can't like, actually you like say that. Yeah, okay. So he like advises Galileo, you can't say that. Because Galileo's like, I have this idea, I think it's really good, I know you're in charge of this stuff, can I write it in a book and publish it? And he's like, no. And it really frustrates Galileo. Yeah. He's very irritated by this. It seems also real early in the printing of books to start banning them already. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Although almost, maybe not. Maybe almost, not. As actually, soon as, actually, yeah. uh, almost as soon as books started circulating, people were banning them. Yeah. Especially, and it's funny because, especially in Italy, because Italy is the center of the church, but it's also the center of the Renaissance. Oh. So you have this conflicting scientists and all these polymaths are coming out of the woodwork going, I have ideas! And they're... It's like super encouraged by the wealthy and the nobility. Of I the can time. write them down. I don't have to be yep. in the room and with I the can, person. I can send it to people, <clears throat> and I can have it sent yeah. out in mass to everybody. That I don't have sense. to send. I don't have to write sixteen copies of this stupid book out. I can write one and have a printer make a thousand of them, yeah. and I can send it to China if I want to. Wow! Awesome, right? And the church goes, "No, not that awesome. Sounds... This is this is really bad for the church." Um, so in 1616, the Inquisition gets together. So the, there was not just the Spanish Inquisition. There were That was always a branch of the church. It's still a branch of the church. That's still a thing. The Inquisition is still a it's thing? It's still a thing. It's not a big thing, mm -hmm. but okay. they still have it. Sure. It's still an accessible part of the church. It's, I, don't even, I don't know if they have like a formal office, but they can still have like an Inquisition at any time. Oh. And that just means asking, we're just asking questions. We're just asking questions. <laughs> With fire. <laughs> because that's almost always involved. Yeah. Torture is always an option in the Inquisition. That's the yep. power they have. Um, so in the 1616, they ban Copernican theory outright. Copernicus, all his books are banned in any Christian country. That's what they say, banning it. Uh, heliocentrism is banned. And Galileo is giving a very stern warning. Don't talk about this at all stop thinking about it you're done it's probably fine <laughs> and at the time this is uh pope gregory i think he was the 15th there was an x the 15th gregory yeah there's a lot of gregs jeez and pope gregory is a staunch old school crabby catholic pope who does not like new ideas and he hates galileo <laughs> he's also kind of run by the jesuits he's okay. a big believer in the inquisition and he's like no nope, undermining my power don't like it Fortunately for Galileo, in 1623, that pope dies. <laughs> Take that pope. Take that. The pressing, crushing force that is time. <laughs> if It'll get you, even if you're a pope. You. I don't care who you are. Come get you. Nobody gets out alive, buddy. Uh, even <clears throat> the saints. They're all dead. <laughs> so, a new guy comes along. Um, he becomes Pope Urban VIII. Oh, uh, now, before he was Pope Urban 
uh, the eight. He was a cardinal. I forgot his name. I think it was like Bertinelli. Okay. Um, but just to the same, we'll just call him Urban the yeah, Eighth. Right. That's what he's most fam- famously known for. Mm-hmm. He liked Galileo. Oh. He thought Galileo had really interesting ideas. And even the Jesuits, up until this kind of falling out in 1616, thought Galileo was fine. Huh. They thought that he, he had a biting wit. They respected that. Uh, they thought that his ideas were interesting mm-hmm. and not as belligerent and openly heretical as, like, Copernicus. Okay. Um, the way he handled it and discussed things. The Jesuits weren't all, like, in lockstep. Right. It was some of the Jesuits, uh, like, Shiner hated him. But other Je- and, and But, like, even uh, Bellarmine was like, no, I think you're an all right guy. You just, this is... You need to have irrefutable, and this is a respectful thing, at least I thought, was you needed to have incontrovertible proof about your theory. It can't be a theory. You have to have it be a fact. You can't just, you can't have like a hypothesis that the sun is at the center. You need to be able to show me without a question, without any kind of mathematical guesswork. Yeah, mathematical leaps. This is a fact. Like, we know this thing because of math. And Galileo's like, I only have observations because I can't. Because yeah, the sun's real far away. It's, tell us. Everything's really far away. <laughs> I, don't know what to think, I, I just have all of my observations through time. If you had spent all the time I've spent with these observations, you'd be able to see it as fact. Okay. But since I don't have a way of recording it, because um, this is well before film, yep. how awesome is film? Like, you can just say, no, that, I watched it happen. And people still will watch a thing happen and say it didn't, yeah. which is wild to me. Well, no, okay. Like, I saw this thing happen. Look at all these things. Nope. That's not real. But Galileo, at least, was given this opportunity by Bellarmine to say, that's why he wasn't banned as a heretic, right? Okay. Um, he was given, like, notice. <laughs> but Bellarmine was not out there with the pokers setting people on fire. But his job really was to go, this is not pro-church. This is anti-church. It was like, this is pro-church, mm, anti-church. Okay. Anti-church, he put on like the banned book list which was a thing actively until like 1963 banned books was like a catholic banned book list it's we're still banning books nowadays which is we just they just banned mouse yeah. which is a book about the holocaust because yeah. it had nudity this is a mouse it's a naked dead mouse got to ban mickey mouse got to ban it yeah mm-hmm. mickey mouse doesn't have pants or, no he doesn't no, have mickey's shirt. got pants yeah pants minnie doesn't it's Kendall's. <laughs> So anyway, she's bit, got gloves in his A bit in his too skirt, sexy but, for no. this show. <laughs> and I can see her ankles. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, uh, it, that was Bellarmine's job was to go, all right, yeah, not good for the church, ban it. Good for the church, don't ban it. And so that's why Galileo was like, oh, come on, we're about this. Yeah. Um, so it's interesting to note, like, Bellarmine was not sitting on the board that said, burn him. <laughs> He's a bad guy. He oh. was kind of this, he was in charge of like the do we ban it, should we ban it. So author, authors would go to him with their work and say, this is what I want to write. Is that okay? Oh, okay. So he wasn't He wasn't like a nefariously evil guy. Even even by like Galileo, that's why Galileo even asked him. He didn't want to thumb his nose at this guy. He was respected. Um, he was very intelligent, but again, 100% on the side of the church. So without question, will always go to the church. But he tried to make it, yeah, Galileo, you can print this, but you can't say that's fact. You can say it's a theory. Uh, This is a hypothetical. This is a maybe. This is not by any, and you have to clearly state that. That was Bellarmine's point. Uh, Pope Urban was kind of like that, too. He was like, dude, I love you. I think you're fantastic. I think you're great. I would like you to write your theory. But what I want you to do is I want you to write the rival theory as well. I gotta teach both sides. You gotta teach both sides of the argument. And if you can do that in a way that's not disrespectful, go for it, man. All right. So Galileo does this. He writes the dialogue concerning the two uh, chief world systems. I can't do not even read my own writing. So the, the dialogue, dialogue concerning, concerning the two chief world systems. So it's the two theories of how the world works, whether right. it's heliocentric, Geocentric. He writes this book, and he does it kind of in uh, an allegorical sense. It's three guys having a conversation. Oh. Uh, he has uh, uh, Salviati, who's the, con- the Copernican. 
okay. kind of the Galileo viewpoint. Do you make these people up? Or he made them. People, okay. He made them. He wrote them. He, he created characters. Yeah, that's a good way of doing it. It was a smart move. Uh, then he had this neutral guy who was uh, Segredo, and Segredo was supposed to be. He was witty and created banter between the two. And then there was this Aristotelian. That's the old school viewpoint, uh, and his name was Simplicio. 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 Now Simplicio comes from. Aristotle had a friend named Simplicius. It was, but the Simplicio said it slightly different way in Italian is calling somebody a simpleton. Yeah, it sounds like it. <laughs> and he kind of, he winds up in the story, Simplicio contradicts himself several times and ends up looking foolish. Well, yeah. Simplicio. Oh, Simplicio. It is... Uh, by every scholar of the time and anybody who's like studied the book, this is just Galileo writing, not trying to be malicious, mm-hmm. just going, these are the merits of the arguments. Yeah. And the middle guy is usually the guy who's kind of, he's poking fun at everybody, but he finds less to poke fun about with that. It's kind of like when you have like evolution versus creationism and yeah. you start poking questions at it and like these guys have all this science and these guys are like, Jesus wrote a dinosaur. Yeah. Like, starts to get a little, hmm. Um, you know, or you have to make huge leaps like God just put the fossils there. Right. That's science. Um, Urban takes it personally. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he thinks, I told you what to do. I, he says, he basically takes it as, I gave you a chance to write this book. I wanted you to write this book. I encouraged you to write this book. I like books. We're friends. Right. We've talked. I think you're a delight. And you slapped me in the face you and wrote, you wrote my version of my guy being an idiot. You wrote the book wrong. You, you made me look stupid. And I think you did it on purpose. Here's the problem. <laughs> this wasn't Urban just by himself thinking this. Urban is surrounded by the Jesuits. And for years before this, and there's contemporaries who've talked about this, um, leading up to this, this writing, um, so it's 1623, he becomes a pope. 1630 is when this happens. Or 1632 is when uh, the book is published. Okay. I think 1630 is when he told him to write it. Yeah. Because it took a while to write it. Sure. And it, it's basically Galileo takes all of his like years of theory and puts it in this book. And it's yeah. pretty awesome. That's going to take a while to write. It takes a while to write. Writing books takes a while. Writing books takes a while. By hand. Written several, especially by hand, Woo! and then editing process. Plus, if you're doing science, yeah. you have to have equations. You have to write down all your observations, and you have to put it in a way where it's understandable. You can't be like, "Oh yeah, there was that thing I did five years before this other thing," and gotcha. then there was that other like they, you have to organize yeah. it. And, and I'm gonna make you look good. And too. I'm gonna make you look good. Ugh, really. He's trying, and he's not. He's not a novelist. He's just laying down the arguments, sure. and then he puts the middle guy in there, and he's talking to different people, trying to get different points of views. So he writes this book. Urban is starting now that he's a pope and not just this cardinal who's able to be a little more independent. He's got the whole church to look after, and he's surrounded by Jesuits. Oh Galileo alienated the Jesuits in 1616 yep. when they first banned him, and after that, by writing other things that the Jesuits thought were attacks against the Jesuit order or speci- mm. specific Jesuits. And he goes back to like Christoph Scheiner going, I don't like that guy. And telling other Jesuits, I don't like that guy. That guy sucks. Yeah. He's just a work. See what he did? Mm, don't like him. He's going to write a book. Yep. <coughs> um, he also ran afoul of this guy, Francesco Ingoli. Very mm. Italian. Yeah. Um, he was a Catholic priest and a lawyer. And he wrote an essay against Galileo years before, um, stating that, well, this guy Tycho Brahe, and Tycho's a very famous yeah, astronomer. I've heard of that guy. Um, he believed that it was a balance between, uh, somewhere between heliocentric and geocentric, where it was certain things revolve around each other, mm-hmm. and. He was actually the right. He was right about comets. He was the only one who was right. Like Galileo was like, no, they're this size and that size, and he had this theory about comets that was slightly different, but that was the right one. So Tycho is like the master of comets at the time. Everybody else is like, nope, they're all this. Tycho also had a golden nose. I think the right guy. Probably. We could Tycho Brahe. It sounds pretty cool. Like no nose. He had no nose, so he had gold. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Might not be Tycho. Mm -hmm. The comets are wrong. Yep. Figure it out. (laughs) <laughs> Otherwise, the Google. We could. We don't have to sit in ignorance anymore. After this, we'll we'll look. No time. Who had a gold nose? No time. You gotta anyway, respond. Gotta re- yeah. <laughs> Fans, 
We're all gonna be three wrong. of you. I'm just going to be purposely maliciously wrong yep. about this yep. until yep. someone corrects I, me. Yep. I think it's great. Tycho okay. Brahe with the golden nose. You know. Uh, he was known as Gold Nose. Sure. Gold Nose Tycho. <laughs> James Bond villain. He was a James Bond villain. <laughs> golden Nose. He cut his nose off to spite his face and <laughs> then made it out of gold. All this is not true. We one of the know. one of the things is or true. It might be. We don't know. He might have cut off his own nose. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Proves wrong. All right, where were we? Anyway, <laughs> uh, so this lawyer in Goli says, in Goli. Tycho says, you're wrong. And he's uh, he said several decades ago, this is how the world works, and it's slightly different than Copernicus and Aristotle, and it's kind of somewhere in between. That's what we're going to use. And also, it makes the church look good. Good. Good compromise position. It's a compromise. It still basically says the Earth is the center of the universe. Yeah. Um, well, not maybe the center of the universe, but stationary. Sure. Or not. It said it's like not stationary. It rotates, but everything also rotates around it. Okay. Whereas uh, some the original geocentric is Earth is fixed in space. It does yeah. not move. And everything moves around it. Yeah. And I think Tycho's is no, it rotates, but everything rotates around it. And Galileo's like, no, it rotates, and it rotates around other crap. Yeah. And the sun's in the middle. That's what it rotates around. Little yeah. did he know the sun also rotates around who knows what. Yeah. It's moving. We're all moving. Moving on up <laughs> to the east side. Maybe. Don't know Maybe. what direction we're going. Don't know. It's too big. Slightly it's too to big. the left. I, yes. <laughs> so, so he has these detractors, and they're in the Jesuit order, and the theory is that they got to Urban. As he's trying to figure out like the machinations of the church and how things are supposed to work, he's also got to deal with all these different political bodies within the church, deal with kings and his relationships with them. So the Jesuits are like, this Galileo guy's got to go. Trouble. And look at him. He's thumbing his nose at you. Oh. He's mocking you. And if you take a weak stance on him, he's going to keep doing it. But That's not right. only is he going to keep doing it, the peasants will do it. Ooh, the kings gross. will do it. The cardinals will ever Nobody's going to respect you if you don't put the screws to this guy. Get him. And he does. Okay. So in 1633, uh, Galileo sent for, then they say, come to Rome. We need to talk. <sighs> The event in question. The event in question. And we have, this is why we had, because we have to explain all this, because I don't want to have to, so he gets there, and this is why. All right. So that's why he's called to the meetings. Uh, he's put in front of a group of priests, because of course. Yep. That's no the best way to. Only scientists in the room. Do and science. And they say, explain yourself. And he does. He yep. explains himself brilliantly it's it, it's written as like this great defense of his views and they're like yeah but in the bible it says this and they use the essay written by Angoli against him and Angoli had said like 10 points that disproved galileo's theory four oh. of them were religious okay. and six of them were science oh okay well, he had some so he and he even said More in the than essay, half. he and even in, in the essay he said ignore the first four because sure. that's not relevant to your science ignore it at your peril basically yeah <laughs> But here are the other six, and those say this. Well, Galileo still refutes all of those things, and at the end of it, the church basically says, we don't actually care what you view it as. This is the finding of the church. You are in violation of the Council of Trent that says this is how we treat heresy. This is how we treat science. This is how we treat all of these things. So it doesn't matter what he said. Thanks for coming in. Thanks for coming. You. It's up so to the science of papers. Basically, if the Inquisition has you come in, it does not matter what you defend yourself uh, with. They've already rendered a verdict. Yikes. So they say, you have a choice. You can recant free choice. All of your heresy and mm. denounce it as untrue. Or we can make you recant it after we take you into a side room with an iron chair and some hot pokers. Well, Galileo's like 65. Well, there's no good age for hot pokers. There's not a good age for this. But even a young a young man would be brash, maybe. You know, a young man might go, I could take it. <laughs> nobody can take the Inquisition. Nobody can expect the Inquisition, and nobody can handle the Inquisition. That was a- so Galileo recants publicly. Oh. He has to. He has to say, okay, I won't do it. Uh, another consequence is all of his works 
and any works he might do, this isn't publicly stated, but all, it's, his current book, the, the dialogue, is banned. But then they also low-key secretly ban any future works he might produce. Oh. They're just like, nope, this guy can't be trusted. Ban him. And then he's also rendered up to other punishment. So he has to formally say, I don't believe this. My books don't get written anymore, banned. And I can be imprisoned. Now, because he recants, and because they don't, like, the Pope's not a monster, they go easy on him. They don't okay. render. They don't subject him to corporal punishment. So they don't yeah. torture him. Nice. They don't brand him. Oh, nice. They don't gouge out any parts. They don't chop off mm. any fingers. Oh, but they so put him nice. under house arrest for mm. the rest of his life, which is uh, nine more years. So he gets nine more years. He's under house arrest. Yeah. Uh, he's initially kept under the eye of a local uh, monsignor. I think he might have been a cardinal, um, in Rome. And the guy's real, like, affable and nice. He likes Galileo. He's not treated badly. Um, he just has to stay there. And then Galileo's allowed to go back to his villa in Florence. Because it's his home. Sure. One of his sentences is he has to read these seven psalms. They gave him homework? Every day. Ugh. His daughter, and now bear in mind, he's going blind. So this is incredibly difficult for him. Sure. Uh, it takes a lot of his time. And he's... It's crushing his soul. I shouldn't have looked at the sun's out. His daughter petitions that she take his punishment. Oh. And the church says, fine. Okay. So I, like his daughter, reads this book for him while he can go and do his other stuff. Like, what a good daughter. What a kid. She's awesome. Like, I, I had no idea he even had kids, but then I'm reading about his daughter. She's fascinating. Like, this is a great person. So she she stayed with him. Do we know her name? I do not. I should, I just... The Galilei. Religious, Galilei, Miss Galilei. 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 Uh, I feel bad. She, yeah, I sh right. she should be... We'll look up. Or if you know, we'll put up, it in the comments. Put it in the comments. <laughs> or do some research. Put it in the comments. That would be yeah. fantastic. Um, but yeah, so she bear, she she takes the sting for him, right? She does nice. this. She, she takes his punishment. And it's she stays with him as he starts to go blind. And he, during his imprisonment, writes like his... <laughs> Opus Dei, like, is a culmination of all his works. You can't stop him writing. 40 years of work, and he writes it, and then he sends it to Holland yep. <laughs> to be printed there. Because yep. they're Protestants, so he can print it. Um, he writes, he continues doing experiments. He yep. studies, this is when he starts to really, like, get into, like, uh, sunspot stuff. He starts to, which is why his eyes go. Yeah. Um, he continues to believe what he believes. There's a myth because it's not necessarily been proven um, that as he left the courtroom and people were like no there is in a fixed position he muttered and yet it moves uh, <laughs> but uh, and there was a famous painting of him staring at a wall and apparently he etched into the wall and yet it moves uh, yeah. while he was on trial this has been Thought to be proven. There's again no real way to say what did the guy say when he was muttering and left right. the room. Like nobody yeah. knows for sure, but that's a nice little story. But what's Sound cool like is him. the fallout of this is that Galileo unfortunately spends the rest of his life in prison. But he's considered the modern uh, father of modern physics. He invented all of these brilliant things. His teachings are widely publicized nowadays, and he's remembered as a legend not only of his time but a father of science. If we didn't have Galileo's teachings. It, it's cool because even though the church cracked down on it, even though the church brought all of its power Everybody, to bear, yeah. they still lost in the end. They still, nowadays, it's widely taught in, it's true. in Catholic schools that Galileo Galilei was wronged and he was a good man who knew right and taught the right thing and he stood up for his beliefs, but he, under the face of torture and possibly death, he had to he had to say no. Science and, wins yeah. out ultimately. I but didn't hear science, about his other popes, but I heard of him. Yep, but science wins out in the end, and Galileo, I mean, he's had what? He's got satellites named after him. Yeah. He's got monuments. He's yeah. got books. Uh, because probably and, a web app or something. Probably a web app, a Galileo app. Uh, yeah. It's just fascinating to me that he, I mean, he's probably got stars and stuff named after him, too. I'm certain yeah, of it. Sure. Um, but it's nice to see, like, the church in all its power tries to crush this guy, and 400 years after that, he's the hero of the story. I think the longer view you take of religion, the more often it will be that 
Prison all along. Yeah. Yeah. Said, say. Almost every time we've looked at it, we go, hmm, yeah. that's not great. <laughs> you got it. I got it. You're, <laughs> well, that's the time you got, that's Will. It. I got it in time. I was watching it the whole time this time. I oh, really, really wanted to nail it. So Well, that um, was exciting. Yeah. A little, a little wrap up there? You know, no, no. That was a little, little wrap up is uh, Galileo was a legend, a polymath, a uh, great man who had an amazing family. Apparently, then I wish raise your kids I, I right. Read, read to know more about them because they sound awesome. Uh, and his daughter loved her father and looked out for him. And uh, you know, sometimes a simple misunderstanding or uh, politics and mixed with religion is really bad. Yeah, that's really really bad uh, because then you start going after not enemies. Um, but it's okay to ask questions. It's okay to do some research, and uh, it's okay to change opinions when doing science. Galileo, amazing. Galileo, well done. All right, all right, all right. Learn a bunch about Galileo. Yep. Now, uh, next week we're gonna be. Uh, we're not going far. Nope. We're staying Physically, in Rome. We're staying in the city. <laughs> so we're going to be talking about the first Roman triumph. Yes, triumph. That's like the the victory parade. Oh. We're going to talk about the very first one. Ooh. And uh, what that means, because oh. that's important. Now that'll be uh, that's March first, uh, uh, five hundred nine BC. So like two thousand years and change before Galileo. We're just keep going back in time. Yeah, we're not going still anywhere. staying around Roman Europe. Just walk um, on the same streets. All right. So uh, like, obviously like and subscribe. Yeah. Uh, uh, share this with other people. Yep. And comment uh, if you have comments or yeah. don't comment. Yeah. Even if you don't necessarily watch the whole video, go through all the videos. Click that little like button. The more little likes, the more little subscriptions we get, uh, makes us feel better. Yeah. And uh, then we can we can get our own name as the the link someday if someday we, we need get enough uh, of you. what 100 subscribers Something we're like close that. we're on the way but anyway you can check yeah you can check out the old videos they're all about history anyway so yeah. it's not like they're timely <laughs> yeah <it's, laughs> all right we'll you need to watch this now or you'll lose it forever <laughs> we'll see you next week this has been this week in history with mike and will i'm mike i'm will thanks for being here and we'll see you next week bye guys